Hey guys, it's Chloe. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're doing something a little bit different and honestly, something that I rarely do here on my channel and that is removing a modification from my 2019 TRD Off-Road Toyota Tacoma. It's a little bit weird because the modification I'm taking off my truck today is one of the favorite things I've ever done to my truck. But you guys can probably already tell by the title of this video and for those of you who have been watching me for a while or following my channel for a while, this may come as a shock to you. No pun intended there. But today I'm going to be removing my Fox 2.5 Race Series shocks on my Tacoma. In this video, I'm going to be explaining everything and why, because if you know me and my channel, basically like every other video, I feel like I'm just raving about how great these shocks are. And don't get me wrong, we're not taking these off because there's anything wrong with them or I don't like them anymore or something happened to them. I actually just decided to make an upgrade. Now in an upcoming video, I will be giving you guys all the details about what my new suspension setup is going to be, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. But in this video, I will be explaining why I'm taking these off and just showing you guys how to remove front and rear shocks from a third generation Tacoma. So this is going to be really hard for me because I really am in love with these shocks. And if you can't tell by my jacket already, I really, really, really do love Fox. But like I said, I'll be talking about it, but let's get into uninstalling. Now, if you guys can see, I do have a spacer right here. This is basically what I installed when I installed these shocks originally so that the sway bar didn't rub against these wider shocks. I do need to retain this for my new setup, so I'm gonna be keeping these on. But again, removing these bolts so we can move the sway bar. So there's two 15 millimeter bolts. Next up, I'm going to be removing the sway bar link from the spindle, so that is just a 17 millimeter. That should allow us to move our sway bar a little bit out of the way, so that it will be easier to remove this shock. Now, if you guys have ever seen some of my other videos where I'm installing these coilovers, you might know that I like to use the method where I detach the spindle from the upper control arm and remove the shock that way. Today, I'm gonna to be trying out a little bit of a new method that I've seen other people do. Basically, we're going to remove the lower control arm from the spindle. I'm hoping that this will give me a little bit more clearance because it is possible to remove and install new shocks going this method up here, but I wanna see if the lower lower control arm method is easier. So if we take a look at the bottom of the lower control arm, you can see that there's two 19 millimeter bolts over here. These are the two bolts holding the spindle to the lower control arm. So I'm gonna break these and remove them. So now I'm going to loosen my pivot bolt and I got my wrench on there.
Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side of the lower control arm, but now that I can actually fit my 22 millimeter socket over it, since the skid plate isn't in the way, I'm just gonna do that. Now I'm going to remove the lower shock mount using a 19 millimeter socket. All right, so now I'm going to lift the lower control arm up to actually take out that lower shock bolt. And here's that lower shock bolt. Now it's time to remove the three upper shock bolts. So you can probably see two in the front and then there's one in the back. And we're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket for these. So now I'm playing a little bit of a game of Tetris to get this coilover out. I think the idea is to slip it between the axle and the tie rod. Now that the lower control arm is loosened, I think there's definitely enough room. Oh yeah. And here it is. My coilover's out now, a little sad. I've pushed my truck out in the desert probably a little harder than Toyota designed it to go and I think I bottomed out twice and topped out once, but I truly think these shocks have prevented even worse things from happening. That's just what they're made to do and I think they've done their job really, really well. Honestly, I'm a little sad to have these shocks off of my truck. Like I've said in some of my previous videos, these shocks have made my truck Fun to drive out in the desert, but they're also so much better than my OEM ones on road because they handle a lot better. Also, I wanna say that I bought these and I've had these on my truck for just over a year now. Now, that might sound like a really short time for some high quality aftermarket shocks like these. I honestly didn't have the intention of taking them off by now, so why so soon? There are two reasons for that, but to be clear, again, neither of those are that these race series shocks did me wrong. It's one, the new setup is actually a newly released suspension kit. It's a brand new product and I probably would have gone with it if it was an option at the time I installed these race series shocks, but I can't go back in time. And two, that the new setup is, in my opinion, better. It has more quote unquote features and I know that's pretty vague and might not make a lot of sense, but that's really the best I can do to describe it without giving it away. But yeah, if you guys have any more questions beyond what I've said about my setup, definitely leave me a comment down below. But now let's remove the rear shocks. All right, so now we're getting to work on removing the rear Fox 2.5 race series shock. So this is actually going to be a lot easier than how removing the front shocks were. So basically I'm gonna start by removing the lower shock bolt. So this is a 17 millimeter bolt. All right, so I got the lower rear shock mounts washer nut off. Now this bolt is really tricky to take out, so I'm gonna use my mallet. And here's the lower shock bolt out. So now I'm gonna remove my remote reservoir. And as you can see, I have my moving blanket drooped over my axle just so that if this thing falls, it won't get super scratched up. And same goes with when we put the new shock in. I just had these with hose clamps before. Now the last thing to remove to remove this entire shock assembly is just this upper shock bolt. So this is a 19 millimeter.
So I'm putting the nut back on the upper shock mount just so when I separate the lower shock mount from the axle, the shock won't just fall. Use my alignment bar to do that. Now I'm gonna take that nut off and just like that, it's pretty easy to take off these rear shocks. So now all four of my Fox 2.5 Race Series shocks are off of my Tacoma and actually I just installed my new setup on my truck so it's on right now. I'm super excited about it but again you guys will have to wait for an upcoming video to see that reveal. Since I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about what I'm going to be doing with these shocks, they are perfectly good shocks. I definitely need to clean them up a little bit. They're just over a year old. They've got maybe 15,000 miles on them. They definitely aren't at the point where they need to be rebuilt or serviced, but I am going to send these back to Fox to have them rebuilt just so whoever's truck these shocks go on next. These things will feel like they came straight out of the box. So I may end up selling these. I don't really know yet, but if you guys are interested, let me know. Anyways, that's all I have for today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you want to connect more with me, you can follow me on my Instagram. It is at Chloe Kuo Taco. I post more in real time on there. Other than that, I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.